So last year we didn't even have a cold open for this part. So do we not need one this time? I don't think we do. We'll just yeah. talk about the new, the next five. <laughs> Boy, the video podcast from the comic book discussion site ifanboy.com. It's been about a year, yeah. would you say? And we're back. Did we go somewhere? I, I never left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ron. I'm Connor. And I'm Josh. Um, so, as Josh said, it's been about a year. In our first episode, we picked out our top five graphic novels. The Watchmen. The Dark Knight Returns. From hell. The Dark Phoenix Saga. 300. Moment of Silence. Alias. Uh, box Office Poison. Strangers in Paradise. Marvels. Invincible. So we decided for the for the unofficial one year show we would pick out six through ten, six through the ten. next five. Yeah, to to round out your library. So you're that, on the island. Yeah. <laughs> you have no. You're on the desert island. Your first suitcase is already washed ashore with the first five. All, all of a sudden, sudden your second in, suitcase. No, in, in, in the distance you see a plane. <laughs> oh, it drops. And you get really excited, and then all of a sudden a crate falls with a parachute, and the box explodes, and it's the next five. Honestly, I'd rather have food. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Or a yeah. flare gun or a satellite yeah. phone. Yeah. But I'll take I'll take comics. But like nine. <laughs> Down the list. Down the list. Yeah, list. After <laughs> like a supermodel, and then if yeah. <laughs> you've read the, the last bit of Dark Knight Returns that you can handle, right? Yeah, you know every pen. Right, right. You finally read the pirate part in the Watchmen. <laughs> <laughs> Is that too close to home if you're on the island? It might be. Yeah. Well, anyway, so so you get your next six. Could be instructive. In that <laughs> That's point. true. So on the desert island, the net six through ten, the books that you absolutely must have. Um, Josh, Josh, kick, Josh, kick us off. I will kick us off. Um, I went with Pedro and me, which we talked about in our shopping show a bit back. Yeah. Um, the reason is that this is, apparently I want to feel sad on my island. <laughs> no, You're not already sad enough. On the other hand, what is, this book is actually ra- ra- pretty important to me because after I started reading comics again, when I sort of came back, um, I was reading you know superhero comics and stuff like that, and it was really fun. This is probably the first graphic novel that I picked up in that period where it, it was like a, a human story on the page that I really connected. Different than the issue, yeah, the weekly. Absolutely. That you get, yeah. um, and this was, I'd say, the first sort of graphic novel in my adult life that made me say, wow, there's really something to this. And yeah. this is always the one that, you know, so if I were running into natives, like, <laughs> this, is, this is the best of us. You know, um, I just think really it's. Really, the beautiful. best of us? Well, I mean, it's good. No, get me wrong. I love it. It's good. I don't I mean, mean the yeah. artistic quality. I oh, mean okay. the sentiment. The oh, human quality. Oh, human yes, quality. Yes, yes, yeah. That's no arguing that. Um, I was weeping on the subway reading that book. It's, yeah. Honestly, it's rough. Like, yeah, it's, it's, I was doing yeah. one of these. I'm yeah. not crying. Just, just, just a, a quick recap. Basically, it's Judd Winnick's uh, recount of his time with uh, his friend Pedro Zamora, who died of AIDS. Uh, they met while they were on the real world. Which is interesting because I think that book has more of a resonance for people of our age group because we, watched, we watched the real world, we right. saw it happen, and then to have this come to kind of end cap it, I think. Yeah, yeah. but really that only helps you sort of understand who they are and, and because oddly enough, the real world and MTV didn't give you the most perfect picture of who these people are as humans. No? Or as, as what they are as You mean it was creatively are. edited to make Can it more Can you imagine Judd Winnick making it onto MTV today? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. Yeah. He doesn't uh, have the abs for it. No, not at all. Um, so. And none of the girls were making out with the girls on that show, so yeah. what's the problem with that? Yeah. So it's black and white. Um, it's Winnick black and white. Writes, it's, draws it's it. It's both funny and really compelling and sad, and it's just the story of, of this friendship and, and, and what Pedro was like, and... Uh, I think if I was on that island, it would be a, a good thing. You know what else is great about this on the island is that it, you could cr- you could take this, you could crush up leaves, and you could color it. <laughs> 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 if you got really bored. <laughs> All right then. You get like mangoes for making some orange. So. Well, that's a good pick. I, so, it's not on my six to ten, but it's uh, it's one of my favorites as well. So um, Ron and I actually came to an agreement on our first well, picks. Did in you call each other? You no, did. No, I didn't. From our islands, yes. we had coconut, yeah. coconut coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> like the dude in the first Survivor. Remember when he was on uh, the I'm over by myself, just making horse noises. <laughs> um, in my first, in my f- one through five, in our first episode, I picked Marvels, yep. which was um, Alex Ross's first big work in Marvel and Kirby Secret. Um, but the from the DC equivalent of Marvels was Kingdom Come. Right. Um, this is the big absolute and version. Yes, the the biblical absolute version. This is this was the this was the my first absolute, I believe, and what made me fall in love oh, with, yeah, it, with it the with the uh, medium with format. the with the format. Yes, correct. Beautiful slipcover. You can use, use this to kill animals in the island. Yes, you can just because it's really heavy. But I mean, <laughs> Alex Ross's art. 
at this size is just is beautiful. It's and and this is the um, this is the tale of the 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 a possible future. It's an Elseworlds DC, DC yeah. tale um, set in the future after the kids of the current heroes grow up to become their own heroes, and they are without morals, and they all they do is fight each other, and they run amok, and the old heroes have to come back and smack the kids around and set the world straight and remind people what it means to be a hero. And really, it's all about Superman. I mean, it's yeah. a, it's a every DC hero every DC hero is in this book. Mm -hmm. But it's, I mean, if you look at the cover, this is the Superman tale. Yeah. It's about him coming back and him, him inspiring the heroes again. And because isn't he DC? I mean, he is, he, yeah, he is DC. Yeah. And it's just, it's iconic. Um, and the great thing about this version, at least, is that you could read it many times over. There's so much. A lot of these books we picked are very dense. Yeah. Uh, in the first show, we had like Watchmen and Dark Knight and things like that. You can read, and you, every time you read them, you find something new. And the same, this half the story is going on in the background without dialogue. Exactly. There's so many little Easter eggs going on. So many little look what characters are painted in. What what this means. What this reference to. And because it's an absolute edition, you get a ton of like kind of the DVD extras. Um, Alex Ross's sketches, a lot of script stuff, a lot of uh, kind of you know identifying what's on each page and what yeah. to look for. So this could this could easily take up about three months of the island. Yeah, easily. So yeah. So um, okay, I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> Cheater. Right off. Here's uh, where it starts and it continues. Yep. So, well, you give him an inch. Uh, <laughs> these are the Captain Ed Brubaker Captain America books. Trades. Um, those look like four trade. Those look like four books. Here's what the deal is. <laughs> okay. I have ordered the book. <laughs> what Which book? book? Uh, the Captain America Omnibus that collects all four of these into one beautiful oversized hardcover volume. Yep. It's en route. <laughs> but uh, it's not here right now. So you, uh, you uh, just on a side, you own the trades and you bought the Omnibus? I rarely do that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but I really loved this story. Yeah. If that's what it is. This is probably my favorite, uh, I will say mainstream Marvel or DC story continuing over the past however many years yep. this has yep. been. Uh, I have my good friend Connor to thank for this because he gave me the trades last year. Who did the art? Uh, Steve uh, Epting. Steve Epting. Nice. Uh, and then there's uh, flashbacks by Michael Lark, yep. um, written by Ed Brubaker. Um, this to me was, it, it's all that is good about Captain America, and it's a beauty, it's just this big epic story about. Uh, the Red Skull and, 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 and history and it all comes together and, and then of course the Bucky coming back yep. and who who would have thought that that would have been good nobody yeah. there's no reason yeah. why that against all odds yeah. and this, that's the kind of thing that you read it uh, you you read like a rumor that it's coming back and all yeah. of a sudden fanboydom just goes oh that's you, you can't I think I did that for sure yeah and and uh, and Ed Brubaker absolutely just killed it yeah um so as far as anything out of Marvel this is this is my favorite thing that's come out of Marvel for years consistently yeah. this has been the best thing yep so um, the, so we have a third plane coming out that's dropping his omnibus separately from the rest of the books well, I, had, I, I did have to pay extra shipping <laughs> yeah so there was can't that. you pick me up. <laughs> came. After a year of you watching me, I thought it was time we'd finally meet. Please, come into my bedroom. It's quite comfortable. Can I offer you anything? Perhaps a glass of champagne? No. I must apologize for the unorthodox manner of getting you here, but Kidnapping your dog seemed like the only way I could do it, so, yes. Let me go fetch your dog. But first, perhaps you'd like to watch a movie. We have plenty of movies. I get them from Netflix. You know, if you go to netflix.com slash ifanboy, you get a two-week free trial. There are no late fees, no delivery fees. Ah, here it is. Eyes wide shut. This will be great. Where are you going? You don't need to leave yet, do you? So, um, in my first five, of course, I had the Dark Phoenix Saga by Uncanny X-Men, which is one of the, the best X-Men stories. Um, so I need, a, I need a little more of an X-Men fix. Um, so I actually go with a, this one trade paperback, another dog-eared copy that I, think I got in, in middle school. Is this, this going to fall apart too, like the other one did? You, you yeah, my, order a backup copy. This actually, um, this actually was the second uh, trade paperback of the X-Men I ever got. So when I got into X-Men, I was reading the Jim Lee issues, and I was going back getting the issues and these books. Um, this is From the Ashes, and this actually is the Madeline Pryor story. So it's about, um, it's about uh, Madeline Pryor, who was a clone of Jean Grey, um, gets introduced, she ends up marrying Scott Summers, and they have uh, Nathan Summers as a baby cable. That's confusing. Yeah. But, um, but what's great about this is that um, it turns out they find out, in this, in this one trade, they find out that Madeline Summers was a clone, 
and she actually gets triggered and turns into Dark Phoenix again, and they think Dark Phoenix came back, but it's not. Uh, but this also includes the Wolverine wedding um, to uh, Mariko, the, this, and the introduction of Rogue, and a whole bunch of Jap uh, Japan stuff, which is really, really cool. So um, it's really good. Uh, Chris Claremont, Paul Smith, what, a couple what of year were those um, early '80s. This is after Burn left, mm -hmm. um, and the early Paul Smith stuff. So um, late, I want to say late 100s. Okay. Um, so is this, an, yeah. is this an available trade? It should be. I hope it is. And that's that Storm with Mohawk. Storm gets the Mohawk in this trade. That happened that early? Yes. Really, I thought that yeah. was a '90s thing. No, no, it was early '80s. No shit. Yeah, no, yeah, before two, so before so 200. Like a Grace Jones. It ha thing. So what happens is that um, they, they go to Japan for Wolverine's wedding. Wolverine wedding gets called off um, and uh, Storm goes out with uh, what's her name? Uh, Yuriko Yuriko, um, Wolverine's kind of wacky friend and they have this wild night in Japan and she kind of gets like, she was Storm was very kind of she was a goddess and she was very kind of uptight mm. and in that she kind of lets loose and that's right. when she goes punk and it was awesome so, <laughs> X-Men from the ashes really really good, Under, underrated so. or not thought of at all that should be. You should so. put uh, like a paper bag cover over that. <laughs> Why? You should make your own book cover just because oh, you're on the island. Yeah. Elements. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. you're trying to cover that up with a palm frond, but what do you got? <laughs> um, in my first top five, I had Dark Knight Returns, which I think we all three had. Yeah. Um, some, would, some would say that's the best Batman story, but uh, others also would posit Batman Year One. It's really from good. Frank Miller and David Mazzuccelli is all could also be the best Batman story. Yeah. It's neck and neck. Yep. I, I, this one's shorter. That's yeah, right. that's kind of why I went with the other one last yeah. time. Yeah. Well, it's it's the this is more of Dark Knight is, is like a at the essence of Batman story, but this is more like pure Batman because it's 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 not wrapped up in all kinds of elements that that define Dark Knight, mm. like him being yeah. old, the iconic fight Superman. This is just Batman um, on the streets, but. It's really, really good, and it's got beautiful David Mazzuccelli art. Yeah, so um, I wish he'd work more. He's out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He teaches. Yeah. He, he works. He just well, yeah, no, he doesn't work in comics. <laughs> he's yeah. not homeless. You can That's, see, you can see stuff. his influence in a lot of stuff now. This is very like uh, Michael Lark is. Yeah. is all over this. Um, this, this, this is the basically this Batman Year One. It's the tale of Batman's first year, where he's. This is the dark, the Batman Begins story, sort of. He's, From the movies, this yeah. kind of what it was. Influenced. He's young. He's making mistakes. Jim it's also Gordon Year One. It's also Gordon Year which One, which is yeah, for me actually it's the part that I remember more than the Bruce Wayne parts or yeah. the Jim Gordon parts because. There's that great story with with Gordon and his partner, who's yeah, the Sarah. Cop. No, his partner Flash. Yeah. yeah, and and that's just Flash. I think made a brief appearance in Batman Begins. No, he was in, he, he was, was he was the one that the, the fat guy. guy. Yeah, 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 but it wasn't the same kind. Yeah, of, yeah, it didn't have to carry the same weight. Yeah, basically for me, like the, the I guess there's two stories going on, but like the big apex of the story is when Gordon and Flash Plus fight. Yeah, yeah. And it's just a, this is this is this is probably also the best Gordon story. Yep. Um, so this, I mean, if you want talking about the best Batman stories, Dark Knight and Year One are the two, and they're both Frank Miller, and then he went crazy. I would not. Yes, he did. And then we got Robocop too. <laughs> <laughs> it was all downhill from there. So. Um, uh, last time we went with uh, Watchmen. Yep. Uh, this time I'm gonna go ahead and stick League of Extraordinary Gentlemen in there. Need a little Alan Moore fix. Yeah. Well, uh, it's very dense. <laughs> uh, and, and, and the thing about Alan Moore is it rewards you for rereading. Yeah. Um, and so it's one of the, if you want to talk about a trade that you have to have around, this is not a bad one to go for. Yeah. Uh, there's just, it's layers upon layers of stuff. And, you know, in reading it a second time, like you see clues for everything. Same way, it works the same way with Watchmen. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to me, the art on this is always a little deceptive. Like at first, it, you, you're like, that's kind of weird looking. And then the more you look at it, the more you should see how much detail and how much It's care insanely is, detailed. Yeah, is how much care has been put into everything. And you can start to look at the backgrounds and stuff and really focus on, on this stuff. This isn't modern day comics where you just get the head and the yellow background. This yeah. is like everything all the way back as far as you can see in the panel is, is drawn. Because he's Alan Moore scripted each panel for <laughs> yeah, about several pages. But also, you know, you know, Kevin O'Neill clearly yeah. put in the time. Oh, put yeah. in the work on this. There's no, Top there's no doubt. Um, if you're talking about re-readability re 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 factor, just Alan Moore's whole library. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're going to only own a few trades that you can reread over and over, it's yeah. all of his books. I, I just, uh, you know, recently having reread this, I fell in love with it again. I, you know, it's, it's a hard sell, actually, because it's a Victorian adventure satire, yeah. sort of. Right. And that's... It's heavy. Yeah, it's not... But it's also incredibly enjoyable, as much as any other book. It's, it isn't, despite what it seems like, it's not difficult. It's not difficult reading. Right. It's not I, you don't have to work at it. It's easy, probably easier than Watchmen. Yeah. Once you really can sort of get into the speed of things, so I would I would definitely go with this one. Cool, excellent. So um, 
I went in a little bit of a different direction. Um, <laughs> well, this is a this is a recent. You literally went in a different direction. <laughs> it's yeah, literally. Uh, this is a recent find uh, within the past year. Uh, Project X Challengers Cup Noodle. Um, this is manga. No surprise, to folks. And we talked about this in our historical episode. I forget um, what episode number it is, but I'm sure we'll tell you in the graphics. Um, but this is the true story of the invention of Nissan Cup Noodle, and. Um, it's it's a quick read. I'll be honest with you. We were doing for, but the thing is, is that I've read this in, in the year. Nice. In the year since I've gotten this book, I've probably reread it about four or five times, and it never ceases to make me laugh. Or and, make him hungry for cup noodle. Yeah, which might be a good work against you on the desert <laughs> island. But yeah, but um, it's just great storytelling. It's amusing. A little bit of change of pace. The black and white manga art is kind of fun to go with the speed, you know. But it's just it's just infinitely amusing and cracks me up. So well, the rereadability is yes, high. it's high, very high. So project tough cup noodle. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, Top ten. Wow. Who knew? Yeah. Yeah. That, it's bold. A manga book. Would you have predicted that a year ago? No. No. Me either. <laughs> he has an unholy love affair with that book. That's growth. Though. <laughs> it is. It's I growth. Fun. You know, you're even more beautiful in person than you are on your website. You do know about your website, right? Perhaps I can get you some food. Would you like some Jello cookies? No, you just want to know more about your website. Well, see, I booked a domain name on GoDaddy.com. I was able to enter the coupon code iFanboy and I saved 10% on my purchase. I used that money to buy a new telephoto lens to take pictures. Wait, 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 where are you going? You don't need to leave yet, do you? Uh, my next pick is something that a lot of people probably have heard of, but I bet you most of them haven't read it. Which is a shame. Um, it's the Green Lantern, Green Arrow uh, collection, which collects the famous Denny O'Neill, Neil Adams, hard traveling heroes storylines. It comes in a nice. This is this here. predates the absolutes. So yeah, this, you can see in when you're talking about production, where yeah. DC they're doing the slip covers, but the size is a little smaller. The production isn't as good. I mean, it's a little bit bigger than a normal book, but or yeah. is it? No, I don't think it is actually. I don't have the original issues. I couldn't. Yeah. No, but a regular comic. Right. Like I have one of the original issues. Yeah. I have the speedy issue. So this is this is the famous. Um, this is when they went socially aware with Green Arrow and Green Lantern. They, they took a road trip across the country. They they did. They fought a lot of people, but they weren't hardly super villains. They were this mostly. Came out in the late sixties, about yeah. early seventies. Was it? Yeah. 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 Okay. It was seventies. Um, and it, they, they fought a lot of social injustice, a lot of well, what you, that big, big business. And what you had was you had you know Green Arrow as the crazy liberal, liberal, and you had Hal Jordan as the tool of the man. Right. And so you had a lot of them traveling across country, and Hal Jordan kind of having his the veil lifted, and Green Arrow pointing out a lot of things. The social you know. justice, yeah, in exactly. Country. Yeah. So it was very. Um, it was very, very revolutionary for the time. I mean, you had to, you have a space hero just basically dealing with slum lords and. Yep. Things like that, and you know, John Stewart's in it. Green Guy Gardner, Speedy. They have the whole drug angle with Speedy hooked up yeah. heroin. Um, my, fa my favorite was the racism one when something happened and a whole bunch of people in the street and somebody yells at Green Lantern, it's like you help aliens, you help people, blue people, blue skin people, you don't help us. You know, and it was it became very progressive at the time. Yeah. It was, yeah. And the fantastically progressive Neil Adams art, which <sighs> well, you look through it right now and you can see a comic book that doesn't look like it's from the late 60s, early 70s. You yeah. see a comic book that looks like it could come out now. Yep. Uh, if you put this together with art from other books, it's just it's it's if, so far ahead of everything else. If yeah. you were to maybe adjust the fashions and hairstyles a little bit and then put modern coloring on this, this would be top sales today. Yeah, I mean, like, totally. he's that good. Yeah, totally. Oh, so good. It's beautiful. Good but this, this is something that, it's very famous, yep. but I don't think a lot of people have read it. So this is You should go find it. Yeah. It's still out. Mm -hmm. And this is this is something that, Ron, you say this should be the next absolute edition. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, totally. Yeah. They, 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 this needs to be bigger and, and, co and recolored. And, or I just don't want to recolor. Well, not recolored, but just make on better paper. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's kind of a matty kind of paper. And, you know, I don't know. But, um, it's nice thick paper. It's like I love Black Canary. Yeah, but um, I love this book. I love this book a lot. When it came out, or when it came yeah, out, we all, all, yeah, we all ran it, yep. got it. Yeah, it was great. So, awesome. So, cheater, what's up next? <laughs> uh, oh, am I cheating again? You're yeah, cheating yeah, I again. Think so. I oh. see it. I see it. All right. Um, <laughs> Connor, in in the first uh, iteration of this, picked the alias omnibus. I don't own that. I only own the four things. But if I was going, I would go get that. <laughs> see, I think you, that you didn't even order this one, <laughs> but no. you had them in trade. So I do, and they're, they're brand new. Yeah. Um, I really like this book. <laughs> this to me is what's good about. Do you have anything different to say than what we said in the first? No. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I think that just character-wise, Jessica Jones is is 
one of the better characters to have been invented to come out of the Marvel Universe in a long time. But you don't normally get new characters that stick or are good. Exactly. We should recap Brian Michael Bendis writing, Michael Gatiss um, drawing. Yes. Um, uh, and possibly both of their, some of their best work. And yes. this started out as part of the Max line and it was adult comics so there was some swearings and some sections. Yeah. Uh, but she has now been incorporated into the, into the main Marvel Universe. She's married to Luke Cage. She's in They've the got Luke. a baby. That's important. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, she's, she's she shows up in New Avengers. She's not really on the team, but she may as well be. No. Uh, Can you have a baby from that way? Oh, move on, move on. <laughs> oh, did we? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I thought it was impossible. That's what I was told. <laughs> anyway, this book has, to me, what is some of the finest sort of dialogue. Yep. And this, is, this is sort of, if you read Bendis' modern stuff, you see a lot of those nascent things coming through here in a really pure way. And... You know, this was his baby. This was his book, and so he did everything that he wanted with it. He didn't have to worry about continuity. He didn't have to worry about any of that stuff. So he just. But had he fit it in. He did. I mean, no, no. I mean, because he, he he used Purple Man. He used characters in the Marvel universe. Yeah. I mean, you know. But they weren't they weren't att attached to any of the storyline. Right. It was it was, yeah, it was, was independent. What yeah. he had to do. Yeah. Uh, and he just he just knocked it out of the park. And then he had the wherewithal to just say, you know what. This is it. The story's over. And ended it. it was I've great. told the tale that I need to tell, and, and we're going to let it lie. And I don't think I've been thinking. more sad when a book ended. Yeah. Right, but in I recent understood times. it. Sure, but yeah. I just didn't want it to. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, but th I think this has a huge rereadability factor also. Well, speaking of rereadability and being sad when a book ended, but getting something good out of it, my, my, one of my picks is the bone complete <laughs> epic. <laughs> um, they talk about re-readability. Re 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 this is thousands of pages. <laughs> um, Bone was possibly this is my bookmark. Uh -huh. um, Bone was from a uh, uh, Bone was possibly one of the um, best independent comics of the '90s and 2000s. Um, it was started in the early '90s and finished up uh, a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and um, it's a great classic kind of fantasy tale written and drawn by Jeff Smith. Um, uh, features a, a character Phone Bone and his cu and his cousins. Yeah, his cousins, yeah, yeah ph Phony Bone and the other one. Um, I always forget the other one's name. The tall one, the lanky one. Um, anyway, tall Bone, Smiley Bone. F f yeah. Anyway, Smiley, smiley Bone. Yeah. And the um, second time on the show, we still don't know. The yeah, book. I know it's hysterical, but I love this book. And um, basically, you know, there are dragons, there's magic, there's swords, but it's also really um, accessible. Um, uh, for uh, somewhat all ages, I mean, some stuff gets a little scary. So why, but are no. you, why are you so into it? Because it's fantasy and dragons and swords, which I, I had come to believe that you were not into. Because it's Ron because, is full of contradictions. Yes, well, no, yes. because it's done. It's done lightheartedly. It's not done heavy-handedly. I hate it when it's like totally absorbed in there. I, but this, like, there's humor in here, mm -hmm. and it's got. I mean, it's somewhat Disneyfied. You know what I mean? Like, it's. I you know, if that's more the image though, because near the end, the shit's pretty heavy. Yeah, no, it, it, rat creatures are scary. Yeah, but 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 never for never once does that have the um, pretentiousness of some of the other ones that I that, that that I don't like. You know what I mean? So um, I don't know, but I, I dig it. It's because well, the thing is, I do like I do like Lord of the Rings. I do like I read I played Dungeons and Dragons. I do you know so so there is a part of me that that does like to do that. It just you know, but um, love this book. This book will keep you entertained for months. Yeah, I couldn't so, argue with you. Taking yeah. that with you, it's fantastic. So. Perhaps you'd like to take off your shirt. I mean. Uh, Look, here, I have another one that you can replace it with. You can put this one on. It's the iFanboy shirt. Would you like to know where I got it? It's from jinx.com slash iFanboy. See, we have them made for us. You can just simply slip yours off and put this one on and, you know, wait, 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 where are you going? Um, in the same way Josh said Pedro me was his first like oh, exposure to the independent world when he came back to comics. Mm -hmm. um, Sin City, Frank from Frank Miller, was one of the first you know black and white books that I remember buying as a, when, when it came out. Yeah. What was it? Nine, ninety three. Ninety three. Really yeah. like Frank Miller. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't know back then. I just it was we were in high, was young in high school, thing. and it was this was the first book I bought where it wasn't superhero based and it wasn't. Yeah. And I thought, wow, this is, you know, this is... This and it, blew it blows me you away. away. It blows yeah, you yeah. away. This uh, is the original Sin City graphic novel, the first storyline with Marv. Marv. Yeah. Um, and to even, I mean, if you just look at it, it's it's absolutely just beautiful book. Yeah. The way he plays with color and light. And, mm -hmm. I'm not color, but shadow and light. And yeah. it just it, it rivals anything going on today. And it doesn't it didn't look like anything that came before it. Uh, and, and also, his Frank Miller's art style has... has Morphed a bit over the years, you know, as everyone's style grows, yeah. and it's a bit more exaggerated. This is still he was still v relatively realistic in his portrayal of people and feet. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is like if you need if a knife <laughs> sticking out of his shoulder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, he's tough. Yeah. Um, so if you have never read a Sin City book, 
Um, the first one with Marv, yeah. just, just, just the one called Sin City with no... I think you've never read the book, but you've seen the he movie. He did name it. It's though. still right. worth it to go back and read this book. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, This is a must-read, so... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're not yeah. wrong. Yep. So um, we we rarely agree on things, as you could see by these, you know, kind of, you know, no kind of, Kingdom Come was a little crossover, but for our last book, all three of us came to a common consensus. As we, we seem to have all purchased. Oh, I'm uh, old. The wonderful, wonderful <laughs> DC: The New Frontier by Darwin Cook. Yep. And we all have the absolute edition. I slipped these um, cracked. Oh. Ooh, ooh, I would, <laughs> I would have to get a new one. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. I would. Yeah. Yep. This um, we've said we've talked about this book before. Is if there's any book made for the absolute treatment, this is it's it. this book. Big, beautiful art. Unbelievably, clean, yes. beautifully colored by Dave Stewart. Yep. It's this is this is. This is the this is the absolute edition. It's a wonderful tale of the, the history. own them all. Of the fifties Justice League as the Justice League gets brought together. The fifties um, transitioning into the sixties. Yeah, fifties transitioning. Yeah, exactly. Fifties transitioning into the sixties. You see a lot of um, a lot of the origins of the Silver Age characters, and then you see kind of the resurgence of the Golden Age characters from DC. Um, it is just elegance on every page and word. Yeah. Like the art and dialogue go hand in hand beautifully. And because it's absolute, you get all the little annotations, which he is also, fantastic. If you're, if you're kind of a DC noob, yep. this is actually a really good introduction of who these characters are and what they're yep. supposed to be about. What they're all this about. Is, yep. This is a dead-on Hal Jordan. This is a really interesting take on Martian Manhunter, a character who doesn't get used correctly a lot. And you get yep. to see what who he is and what he's actually all about. Yep. Um, you know, a lot of the big guns are here, but more and lesser effect. Superman and Batman have, have something to do with it. But you can even about. tell, like, on the cover, you see the real big Green Lantern flashes in this a lot. Yeah. One yeah. woman's been poor, but, like, Batman's in the background. One, right, yeah. Superman's in it, but he's in the background. It's not really about these guys. It's about, you know, Green Lantern, Flash. Yeah. And basically, this is the precursor to the forming of JLA. So I would yeah. say it's not in continuity, but if it was, it would be it ends with the JLA It ends with the form. It ends with them yeah. fighting Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. not a continuity. It's, it's, it's Elseworlds book, but it's, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's just it's, yeah, no, it's, it, the, it's, yeah. it's let's put the DC universe in the fifties and let's play with it. And that's it's great. It's, yep. it's unbelievable. Plus, if you get the absolute, you get the really awesome sort of homoerotic alternate ending. That's yes, it. that's Aquaman's weird. man on the beach. <laughs> Hand in hand. Hey, on the, like us, on the beach! On the beach! It'd be kind of homoerotic there, too. I'm not going to lie. We'd get lonely. We're just humans. Uh. <laughs> we just want love. Exactly. <laughs> so Sorry. that's our um, 6 through 10. We've now picked the top 10 books. See you next year to, um, 11 through 15. Yeah. Which is every week, but by the next year we'll be at yeah. 47 through... <laughs> then we start scraping. <laughs> Start. This is the latest <laughs> issue of Captain America. <laughs> um, so if you want to write us in and you've got your own picks, you want to tell us which ones you'd pick on a desert island, you can write contact at ifanboy.com. Uh, there's the voicemail, which is 888-FANBOYS, which is 326-2697. Send us your thoughts, questions, uh, if you have a list, whatever. Um, and we'll do those sometimes in the video show, sometimes in the audio show. Yep. And you can head over to ifanboy.com, and that's where you can find um, our audio podcast, as well as the back episodes of our video podcast, a year. Congratulations, guys. Good and job. there'll be a discussion thread on this show. Yep. And I remember we did the first episode. A lot of people put yep. their top five, what they would choose. So it will be interesting to see what your six through ten are. Yeah. Um, Not so your top five, your six through ten. Yeah, so you can go to ifanboy.com and do there. Also go to revision3.com forward slash ifanboy and click on discussion forums. You can find our forums um, where you could just kind of have a free-for-all debate. Yep. So, um, so, yeah, so these are, I like that. This is I was going to pick the Miracle Man trade. That would have been nice. doesn't exist. I'm not a cheater. <laughs> it doesn't exist. I just don't own them. There, was no there are old Mar Miracle Man trades. They just are way out of print. eBay. <laughs> Listen, you're going to the island. Uh, you know, you've got time to work on this. <laughs> this shirt fit a lot better last year. Uh, <laughs> oh, right now, right now. It's a sad commentary. I know the feeling, to be honest with you. I, know the, I, I attribute it to the dryer shrinking. It, as yeah. opposed to me getting longer. Well, I owned this shirt for about a year before we did it the first time. Yeah, so you get two years of shrink on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Whatever you need to get through the day. <laughs>